Hello and welcome back to this 3D code overview. Today we're going to be doing the UVs as promised and if you remember in my previous videos I talked about 3D code having a UV room. Uh, you might notice that it's completely blank right now because it's primarily for imported meshes and uh, a mesh will show up here as well after you do a bake which some people find a bit confusing because obviously you want to do your UVs before you do a bake. Um, but what not, what not, a, oh my fing god. What a lot of people don't realize is uh, you can actually do all of your UVs in the retopper room from here. As soon as you activate this mark seams tool, either from that menu or from hitting the spacebar, uh, it opens up every UV tool that you would have in the UV room. So we can do everything from in here. Uh, you might have noticed that I tidied up my retopo of the frosting a bit, just added in a few loops here and there just to make it uh, flow a little bit nicer. I did also do one major change, which I will show you, uh, which was to completely remove the rings on the outside and I actually just grabbed the selection of the uh, outer edges and scaled them inwards so they were sort of clipping through the mesh a bit which is what I want because I don't want any gaps really I don't want to see through the mesh although it's mostly going to be viewed from a top-down angle no one ever looks at a cupcake like that so we'll be okay I want to add in some additional geometry onto the base and I will explain why but uh, for now, so we'll go back to points and faces and just holding the control tool, uh, the control key uh, to activate the, um, the split tool. I'm just going to add in some, just maybe three loops, which might seem redundant considering this is a straight shape, but uh, we're going to change it later, but we're going to do it after we do the bake. We could, um, we could change the sculpt now and then do the retopology accordingly, but I do want to show off the tweak room a little bit in one of the videos. It's not a room I spend a whole lot of time in, but for the sake of an overview, it's probably worth it. The UV room is uh, is not worth it. So now that we've done that, we can just go ahead and start UVing. So I will go to the Mark Seams tool, and currently there is a bit of a bug in 3D Coat. Uh, there's always been some issues with using more than one symmetry plane. Uh, so for, m f for the most part, you kind of want to stick to one for now until it gets fixed. I'll turn it off completely just to do the unwrap. Um, and then I'll sort it all out later and I'll show you what I mean with bugs. So if I hold the shift key with the mark seams activated, it will run along an edge loop. And since we have this edge loop running all the way through, it just goes right through and cuts it and immediately if you see the UV preview uh, it automatically kind of it shows you what it would look like if it was unwrapped it doesn't actually unwrap it yet we will get to that uh, now curiously based on my seams this should be in four quarters but we're seeing two meshes which means I have an issue somewhere with a vert probably not being welded, most likely over here. So I've just grabbed my points and faces tool and yeah, okay, so if I just do this, that's fine and it will probably be on the other side as well. So yeah, if you're wondering why your UV island doesn't make sense with the seams that you're making, chances are you've probably got a, a, a vertex that isn't welded. So let's go back to the UVs here. So now I can see these are in their four quarters. So I'll just continue marking seams here. I could do seams all across um, this loop here, but if you think about how unwrapping works, uh, I don't really want to include all of that geometry. Let me see if I can give you an example down here. I don't really want to include these triangles here in this unwrap because if you can see in my UV preview 
it creates a lot of uh, distortion. So it makes sense to do the scenes more like this because for the underneath and for the top, it's just a flat mesh. And you can see in the UV preview that all, all already both of these meshes are coming out with far less distortion. And there you go. So normally the UV preview, uh, I believe if it's red, it means it's getting um, squished in. And if it's blue, I think it means it's getting stretched out. So if you end up with just this gray color, uh, it's, that's pretty clean UVs. Um, so I'll continue doing this. If you wanted to deselect the seam, it's, or rather, uh, undo the seam so that there isn't one, uh, just hold control and click on it and it will put that uh, connection back in place. Let's move on to the next piece. So this is the actual cake piece which when we built it we were using the X and Z symmetry but there's no point in unwrapping it in the same way because of how the frosting sits on top of it. Um, if you know anything about uh, baking down sort of an ambient occlusion or anything, you know that if the cake mesh here, the green one, was unwrapped symmetrically in four quarters, then we'd get an ambient occlusion here where the cake is, and that similarly would be mirrored on all the other three sides, which isn't correct with the frosting. So even though it is a symmetrical mesh, we're going to have to treat the unwrap as unique um, so I'm just going to create two cuts, that's fine. It has a little bit of stretching from the red, but honestly not a worrying amount in the slightest. Uh, if we wanted to tidy this up a bit, since we'll never really see the underneath, we could create some seams here, and that will help straighten out the UVs above. And in theory we could do the same here, depending on our frosting levels. Yeah, might as well. The the frosting covers most of this, so we might as well do that. So that's pretty nice. So let's do the frosting next. Now this one's a bit complicated. There really isn't a good place to put a seam here. Um, so I'm just going to go straight through the middle. And I'm going to use uh, a different tool for that. I'll start by just putting this point here just so I remember that that's sort of the middle and same again over here. So I know this is where I want to start and over here is where I want to end. And I'll just use the UV path tool and I'll just come here and then click somewhere on the top. Okay, not the best. So the UV path tool it finds the shortest route to your point. So maybe I need to just select shorter points because I, I mean, I can see by eye that this would be a good middle point. So sometimes computer calculations don't know that. And bring that down to there. And then I'll just hit the enter key and it creates the seam. And then I'll press escape to uh, disregard my path. And I'll just come back to mark seams. And to be honest, that's looking perfectly fine. And we can see here that the unwrapped shells are appearing when we hover over, but there's nothing actually in the UV preview. That's because we still have to perform the unwrap function, which you can either do from uh, this menu over here somewhere, or just spacebar and hit the unwrap button. And there we go, pretty much immediately. We want these UVs to be overlapping. And I'll show you... Uh, a nice way, which is just essentially you hit Control C, and then select the other one, Control V, and provided that the meshes are actually symmetrical and the same, uh, that will work flawlessly. If for whatever reason it's not working, it's probably because your mesh is not actually symmetrical. So we could do this for those pieces, and we don't need to do it for the others. Um, and so now if we hit the pack UV tool, it repacks it, but it keeps our overlaying. And that, that is how we're going to have to unwrap this mesh. There is 
a quicker way to have done that control C control V and that's just by using the uh, symmetry so if I just hit unwrap again so it places everything back where it was and then go back to my base and re-enable my symmetry now watch the UV preview over here when I hit this uh, symmetrical c copy button like like that which you might think is ideal it's perfect that's exactly what you want and then you can hit back UV already something is seeming a bit weird uh, I don't know why it would think that these areas are stretched and these are squished something's gone wrong and I think it's a bug at the moment with 3d coat if I come back to my uh, base layer here and disable symmetry you'll notice that it's done some pretty weird things to my seams the UV preview shows that these pieces are connected and yet in the unwrap they're not so it's pretty uh, it's pretty bizarre and that will cause some issues when we do a bake as well so I'm just going to take it back to where it was depending on the resolution that you're aiming for you might want to increase the padding closer to the edges I imagine this is probably fine uh, and also the padding from one island to another uh, larger resolutions obviously don't require that much of uh, a distance between the islands but it's all kind of uh, relative so this at say like 2k that amount of distance might be fine but this at like 256 could cause some uh, texture bleeding from one island to the other similarly if you draw something too close to the edge on a clamped t texture you can get some odd issues um, this is probably fine for our cupcake but I will just show you how to do that so with the spacebar menu if you go to UV settings you have this window here which isn't the most user friendly if I know that that's 0.2 then this should be 0.8 in theory this is why I don't like this area it requires a bit too much thought process it, 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 it would be better if this, if this was sort of uh, 0 to 1 on each side so if you were 20% in here you'd know to be 20% in there or something like that rather than having to be 0.2 here and 0.98 here if you know what I mean and then this slider here you can increase the distance from the islands 3d coat has no idea how big you want this texture so it can't really say to do it in p pixels because it has no reference for that so I guess that's why it's in percentage but so I'll do 150 and I'll repack that I'll do a couple of attempts because that looks I think it could do better that's probably okay if you were unwrapping something and you wanted the orientation of it to be exact like if I, if I absolutely needed this island to be facing that way uh, what you can do is you can use the pack UV2 so that will do the same packing but it will keep the orientation of your shells which is pretty handy for this I don't really care I, I'd rather it just work out whatever's best so that's the UV's done basically so now we just need to get it ready for a bake and the way we do that is if you hit the uh, bake with normal map per pixel because that's where we'll be sending it to uh, you'll get this cage uh, and if you're familiar with baking this shouldn't need any explaining but essentially there's two cages there's an inner and an outer so we're previewing the inner now so I can show you and you can toggle its strength or rather its position and the idea is to keep the inner and the outer as close as possible relative to inside and outside so the inner should always be inside the outside should always be outside but the closer these are to your sculpt mesh um, the more I suppose d details you'll get on the bake you know if I were to increase my outside shell to something like that it's just it it has to cast a longer way away at a much larger scale <clears throat> so the details can often be a bit blurred 
Um, so I'll unhide the, uh, the ghosting for now. So for the inside, I usually just start with a low value and then where I see it pop out, I'll just push it in a bit. And there are going to be some scenarios where there's nothing you can really do. Like no matter how far you push it in or out, there'll be some areas which will be in and some areas which will be out and you can manually adjust and we'll get to that later. Uh, so for the outer shell, same again, you kind of want to bring it pretty close. Um, there's no real point in me expanding this out so it covers everything because then I'm losing detail in a lot of areas where a smaller cage would work fine. So I'll bring this in a bit, I guess, so the cake is at least covered, this, this portion here, because that would be a bit annoying to alter. Um, and so with that done, you can now just tap and hold. Oh, hang on, I'm still in the Mark Seams tool. I think this is uh, a bug as well. There's no reason that I should be placing down seams here. In fact, now I can't, even though just then I could. So I think that's a bug. Um, but either way, if you wanted to keep your bake settings, uh, don't hit cancel here. You hit OK, and then on this window, hit cancel. Uh, and so now... Let me just undo that seam and I'll just go to the select tool because that usually works. So bake, bit normal pixel. And so yeah, again we're starting where we left off. And now it should yeah, okay, so now I have control, which is good. So if you just click and hold, it will raise or rather push out the verts from the surface. And so you kind of just want to do that wherever it's poking out. You'll often find when you do your bake, there will still be some areas that might need a bit of a tidy up. And then it's kind of up to you whether you want to just try to fix it in the texture, which is easy enough most of the time, or if it's gone so completely wrong that you have to do a rebake. Uh, so I'll hit OK and then I'll hit Cancel again because I just want to re-explain something that I mentioned before. I have my Retopo object layers the same name as my Vox tree layers, my sculpt layers. And that's because I have this enabled to... Uh, it will essentially bake each of these objects one by one, uh, but then the result will still be together. So this, it will treat it as though it's just baking this mesh on this sculpt and then it will go to the cake and it will be like it's doing this mesh on this sculpt and you get the idea. Um, I often prefer to do that rather than trying to bake it all as one because something like this where my ge geometries are not one whole mesh you can get a lot of weird intersecting areas if I come to the uh, the bake here you can see that even something down here, my cupcake holder is has been pushed out so much that it's intersecting with the cake mesh. This wouldn't happen if this was all one joined mesh, but it's 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 not. So it treats each sort of expansion as its own local space. So if I were to bake this without the name correspondence enabled, then I would end up with some weird details from one sculpt ending up on the retop top of another, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I have the name correspondence on, which is why they are the same. And it works for children, so the frosting has... Uh, let me just drop out of this again. This has the sprinkles and the beads in it, um, but if you look at the name correspondence little helper th bit here, I'm pointing at my screen for some reason. I know you can't see that. So this just says um, something somewhere about how it also takes the uh, the children of objects. At least I think it does. Frosting layer will include the sprinkles and the beads. So we're nearly ready to bake. There's just one more little thing I wanted to show you in that we can actually start painting our mesh before anyone has laid down any UVs, which is pretty good in a team scenario where, let's say something, some complicated model uh, might take like 
a day or even more to unwrap, although I don't know how in something like 3D Coat it's pretty quick, but let's just say that that's the case. You can actually just start painting on the sculpt immediately, so I'll call this uh, bead special, maybe beads special. And I'm going to come to my box tree here and I'm going to temporarily bring the beads out of that child layer. And now I'm going to paint it with metalness and roughness and also with, with, with the color as well. So I'm enabling color and my gloss. And I'm just going to come in here. Oh, I want roughness to be zero. There we go. So now these are going to be shiny little metal balls that for some reason people eat. Okay, so there's our beads and there's our panoramic map, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, yeah, so we've just started to paint our object before we've actually done any baking. We did do the UVs, but that's irrelevant. We could have not already done the UVs, but we have done them, so there we go. So now we will actually do a bake. I'm sorry that it's taken so long to get here. Seems fine. I would recommend disabling this local occlusion, um, mainly because baking the ambient occlusion in the paint room uh, just seems to be superior. Uh, from what I can understand, it's comparable with something like X normal. Whereas if you bake the occlusion here, the results, they're, then they're, they're never good. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I always choose to not bake the occlusion here. I just, I don't see the point. Um, UV set name, we'll give this cupcake and uh, I'll give it a 1024. It's a bit of an overkill for a, a little cupcake, but still. So I hit OK. And now it will do its bake, and this will be pretty quick. It's done. So now I'll hop over to the paint room, and the thing that you need to bear in mind here, and the reason I have my Vox Tree layer also docked is that in the paint room we're seeing both the sculpt and the low poly mesh so if I enable the wireframe by hitting the W key you can see we are looking at both so just hide the root of your sculpt layer and for some reason oh I know what I've done wrong I just realized my beads aren't here and that's because of what I was telling you earlier about the name correspondence and children layers. So let me just get rid of this. I'll keep the beads special. There. It should still be, yeah. So I'll put everything back to where we were. I need to move the beads layer back into the frosting and now it will actually work. Sorry about that. Make sure that's off. 1024. Cupcake. Um, and I'll hide the sculpt stuff from here rather than in the paint room, so I'll just disable it there. Uh, and there we go. So there is our baked cupcake. Um, there's the wireframe. And the, uh, the beads, as, as you can see, have already come in textured, which is nice. Um, so that about wraps it up for the UV video. Uh, in the next one, we will cover baking the ambient occlusion and the curvature map uh, and laying down some pretty basic textures using uh, alphas and stencils. Um, we'll talk about the smart materials but we won't actually have any need for them in this particular overview but uh, we will cover them later. Let me know if there's anything I didn't cover too well or I went too fast or some hog keys we missed out um, or if you have any other questions um, I'll be more than happy to respond. Thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.